So a warm good morning to one and all. Those who are new, my name is Archana Kala Sijiruman. Today, as a part of current affairs discussion, we'll be dealing with polity, environment, and economy. So let's start with polity, constitution, and governance. So as far as polity, constitution, and governance is concerned, it is a very important topic for your prelims. You will get almost 20 questions from this topic alone. Polity, environment, and economy together constitute almost 50 to 60 questions. So that is the importance of this topic. And as far as polity is concerned, you will know the static part of polity. Like uh, part one, what part one deals about? Part one of Indian polity, union and territories. Part two, citizenship. Part three, fundamental rights. Part four, DPSP. Part four A, fundamental duties. Then we have part five, central government and goes on like that. And apart from that, amendment of the constitution, basic structure of the constitution, all these were in use. Basic structure, amendment procedure. Then if I would say in DPSP, uniform civil code was in use, article 44. So static portions I haven't included in this material because it may take a lot of time. So apart from that, important statutory bodies, important constitutional bodies, what is parliamentary form of government, what is presidential form, what are the features of unitary government, federal government, like that central government aspect, parliament is very important, state legislative assembly is important, council is important, all your static questions are really important. And in that, anti-defection law was also in the news. That all things I have not included. CD was in news, ED was in news, enforcement directive was in news. So, so many static questions was directly linked to current affairs was in news. If I discuss all those topics, it will take a lot of time. So be thorough with your static questions. In polity, be thorough with your static questions. I will be discussing current affairs only topics and few topics will be linked to your static as well. So that is our approach for today. So let's start our discussion with the first topic, Rohini Commission. So have you heard about Rohini Commission? What is it aims at? See, Rohini Commission, why it isn't in use is and you can read it later. See, Rohini Commission was constituted under Article 340 under the constitution with the approval of the president on 2017, it has been constituted to complete the task of sub-categorization of OBCs. So what is the purpose of Rohini Commission? Sub-categorization of OBCs. See, have you heard about National Commission for Backward Class? Is it a statutory body or a constitutional body? Constitutional body it is. Which amendment it came as a constitutional body? So regarding OBC reservation, we have few commissions like Kalelkar Commission which was set up in 1953, Mandal Commission you know, it was 50% ceiling, now 10% is given for EWS also. So that is again important and reservation details I have given and in 2018 Supreme Court directed the central government to exclude the creamy layer also. And regarding National Commission for Backward Class also you should know and regarding EWS category also you should know from this area. And apart from that, in polity, what all other commissions do you need? Other commissions. Similar to Rohini Commission, we have other commissions. Have you heard about Sarkaria Commission, Punji Commission, Swaran Singh Commission? Any other commissions? Fasal, Fasal Ali Commission. See, all the commissions are really important. You must be thorough about that also. Regarding Rohini Commission, see, they will give you match the correct following questions or like identify the correctly matched pair kind of questions. So you should know the important commissions, very important. Okay. Moving on further, we have anti-conversion laws. Okay. Recently, the Karnataka Legislative Assembly passed the Karnataka Right to Freedom of Religion Bill 2021, commonly referred to as anti-conversion bill. So current affairs aspect, what you should know is state that are having anti-conversion laws. See here. Odisha is having, Madhya Pradesh is having, Arunachal Pradesh, Gujarat, Himachal Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Uttarakhand and Uttar Pradesh. All these states are having anti-conversion laws. So you have to buy hard these states, it is really important. Okay. So anti-conversion law, first we discussed about Rohini Commission, second topic is anti-conversion law. Moving on further, we have Ministry of Cooperation. See recently, the government has come up with Ministry of Cooperation. See, cooperatives comes under which list? State list. Very good. It comes under state list and the ministry has been constituted under the central government. Who is heading the ministry of cooperation? Home minister. Yes, very good. Amit Shah is heading the uh, ministry of cooperation. See, in this angle, you should note that it is aimed at realizing the vision of Sahakar e Samriti, a new push to the cooperative development. So, 
so it is saying that giving a better coordination better cooperation among the ministries so that ministry of cooperation aims at better promotion of cooperators okay strategy samanda so the core topic for the day is hate speech see recently in kerala assembly there was an issue regarding tc george you might have heard of the same see that is hate speech so what is hate speech in general it refers to words whose intent is to create hatred towards a particular group that group may be a community a religious group or a race this speech may or may not have meaning but is likely to result in violence so any speech which may create a violence or create a hatred between two groups or a community or a religion or a race is called as hate speech see this is very important as far as your mains is concerned analysis part you may get questions but here the legal position of hate speech and under representation of peoples act few conditions are provided for hate speech that is only important so legal provisions you may please look under ipc we have section 153a 153b of the ipc section 295a of the ipc section 5051 and 5052 see you can read it not so important but you should know that it is given under ipc that is important hate speech is given under ipc okay so that is important and under representation of people act section 8 okay again representation of people act 1951 and 1950 is important important provisions relating to 1950 and 1951 can be asked in your examination in mains also it is relatively very important but the thing is important statement wise questions can be expected here like uh, this provision comes under rpa 51 or rpa 50 like that you have to be very thorough with rpa 50 and 51 so here section 123a 3a and 125 of the rpa also bars the promotion of animosity on the grounds of race religion see all these provisions are related to religion race community all those things and if it is a speech violates these kind of uh, religious tolerance and hatred is developed between two communities or something it may refer to as hate speech so in prelim sample just that's only will do moving on further we have right to be forgotten see right to be forgotten under which right is it a fundamental right yes it is a fundamental right it comes under which right article 21 see article 21 is otherwise called as living right you might be knowing it is called as living right okay living right see it has got so many inferred right in it it is very important all the inferred rights are given in your lakshmi ga you have to study all the inferred rights regarding article 21 here right to be forgotten is recently in the news because the union government informed the delhi high court that the international legal concept of right to be forgotten is evolving in india and it comes under right to privacy see whenever you hear the right term right to privacy you should know that it comes under article 21 an important judgment you should know what is the important judgment kutaswami kutaswami judgment very important kutaswami judgment you should know so right to be forgotten it is the right to have publicly available personal information removed from the internet search databases website or any other public platform once the personal information in question is no longer necessary so once the information is required once it has been used once it is necessary it is there okay after its use it has to be removed so a person can be asked to right to be forgotten so it is a fundamental right under article 21 very important it can be asked in this year prelims relatively very important moving on further the right to be forgotten gains importance after the 2014 decision of the court of justice of the european union so another important aspect as i mentioned earlier it comes under putasami judgment and another important aspect is right to be left alone see it is again comes under article 21 it is also a fundamental right see it doesn't mean that one is withdrawing from society it is an expectation that society will not interfere in the choices made by the person so long as as they do not cause any harm okay it is not meaning that the respective person is alienated from the society he is a part of society but he has the right to be left alone very important it can also be asked so right to be forgotten and right to be left alone okay moving on further we have interstate river disputes okay see interstate river disputes i have given all the important interstate river dispute and the states associated with it very important prelims questions can be expected very very important prelims questions can be expected how it is important krishna river is there periya river is there then mahadi river mahadi or mandovi river goa karnataka maharashtra has issues concerning the river 
So all those important river disputes I have given, Vamshadara is there, Godavari is there, Kaveri river dispute, you all know Kaveri river dispute. We have Narmada dispute, Revi, Beer, Sattlesh disputes and all. So important river disputes is important. See, have you heard about federalism? Interstate river disputes, inter-border river border disputes, etc. may affect Indian federalism. It is a challenge to Indian federalism. So what is meant by Indian federalism? Yes, federation means division of powers, federalism means division of powers. We have a central government, we have a state government, we have local governments and they are working in their respective spheres. So according to schedule, not schedule, yes, schedule 7, three lists are there, central list, state list and concurrent list and each center, state and both has given jurisdiction according to the list. So federalism is an important feature in which the state and the center is cooperating, collaborating, competing, etc. So that the autonomous city of the states is ensured as well as the centralizing tendency of state is also maintained. So Indian federalism is an important angle. It can be asked in mains. Very, very important topic. And have you heard about coming together federation and holding together federation? Very important aspect, okay. This is not in current affairs, but I am telling coming together federation and holding together federation. See, these two concepts are very well explained in NCRT, coming together and holding together. India comes under which group? See, India formed first, then only we had the state. So, India is holding the states together. So, it comes under holding together federation. Very important, very important concept from NCRT. Whereas in USA, the state formed first and the state combined to form the USA Federation. So, they are coming together federation. Very important coming together federation, typical example USA, holding together federation, typical example India. So, it is an important concept in federalism and it is in NCRT. Very important, you have to read the NCRTs. Really important, okay. Moving on further, as I mentioned earlier, interstate river dispute and interstate border disputes may affect what? Federalism. So, you can expect statements like that. Indian federalism, which of the following statements are correct regarding Indian federalism? Or like federalism in general, few statements can be expected. It is very conceptual question. But it is an important aspect that you should also know about coming to the federation, holding to the federation, competitive federalism, collaborative federalism, combative federalism. In the new era, so many federalism are there. So, you should know about a one-liner about all these type of federalism. That is also important. Moving on further, interstate border disputes. See, I have given the figure here. You can look it later. Interstate border disputes. Which all states is having border disputes? That I have given. Again, border disputes may affect federalism. Very important. And next is mediation bill. See, recently mediation bill 2021 was introduced in the parliament. It seems to promote mediation and provide for enforcement of settlement agreements resulting from mediation. See, what is mediation? There will be a mediator and the dispute is resolved in such a manner that the mediator will involve in the process and the respective dispute won't go to the court. It is out of the court settled. See, in the current era, what is the main issue of Indian judiciary is that we have a pendency of many cases. So, in that situation, we need to go for alternative dispute resolution mechanism. Very important alternative dispute resolution mechanism. What all comes under alternative dispute resolution mechanism? You might be knowing about alternative dispute resolution mechanism. What are alternative dispute resolution mechanism? It is settled out of court. It is not involved in the judiciary. It is settled out of court so that the pendency and number of cases in Supreme Court can be reduced. And what all comes under area? Arbitration, tribunals example, arbitration, conciliation, mediation, negotiation. Have you heard about Lokatalat? People's Court. All these comes under alternative dispute resolution mechanism. Very important, you should know about this. I think it is not directly mentioned in Lakshmi Gang, ADR mechanism. But it is important, that is why I have included here. See, arbitration, there will be an arbitration tribunal. And in conciliation, a counselator will be there and he will do the process and a third party counselator will be there. In mediation, some will be the common friend or something, a mediator will be there. He will be giving the uh, like kind of advice. And in negotiation, 
the two parties alone will negotiate the issue. So before going to the court, if we do this alternative dispute resolution mechanism, the disputes can be settled out of court and the judiciary can be made out of from the baggage of all these cases. So that is the relevance of ADR, very important, can be asked in prelims as well as mains point of view. Now I discuss only about the prelims point of view. Moving forward, again, the issue is what we have constitutional cases, appeal cases, so many cases are there. Okay, again tribunal referred, referred cases, so many cases are coming to the judiciary. So now the Chief Justice of India has argued the government to seriously consider a suggestion to restructure the judiciary to include National Court of Appeals. So there will be four courts, Chennai, Kolkata, then Mumbai and Delhi. Okay, four courts will be there and it will be dealing which cases? Appellate cases, National Court of Appeal. So it is again important. So in such a scenario, a much relieved Supreme Court of India situated in Delhi would only have matters of constitutional law or public law. See, have you heard about public interest litigation? Pill. Pill is also important, okay, because so many pills are now filed. So in that cases also, judiciary is very much overburdened. So in that situation, National Court of Appeal is, has its significance. See, it may have its merits and demerits. It may sometimes override the powers of high courts. There are issues concerning National Court of Appeal. All these comes under your main, main's point of view. I am not going into detail. In main's perspective, very important question for quality main's aspect. Okay, moving on further, we have marital rape. See, marital rape, is it a criminal offence or a civil offence? Like, is it criminalised in India? Marital rape. No, marital rape is not a criminal offence. You can expect statement by patients here. See, a recently a bench of petitions seeking criminalization of marital rape has been filed in the Delhi High Court. So, in that sense, the Supreme Court has said that we will do a constructive approach for the same. And National Commission for Women has also said that it should be criminalized. See, National Commission for Women is a what type of body? Constitutional or statutory? It is a statutory body, okay. The important bodies, whether it is constitutional, whether it is statutory, you should know. Really important, see. It comes under your static part, so I have not included the bodies here. Statutory bodies, regulatory bodies, constitutional bodies, extra constitutional bodies, really, really important. And moving on further, see, section 375, you might have heard, regarding rape, concerning rape is dealt in section 375. And if a marital rape is considered, the legal provisions available to women is section 498A deals with women subjected to cruelty by her husband or any relative and Domestic Violence Act 2005. See, Domestic Violence Act is very important for males. And however, a magistrate under the law has absolutely no power to criminalize the act of man raping his wife, which is called as marital rape. Neither can the man be sentenced. So it is not a criminal offense in India. As far as now, it is not a criminal offense in India. Very important. See, uh, that movie, Ketiolan and the Malaga, you might have seen, it deals with marital rape. Okay, so it is not criminalized in India, very important. Next is Election Laws Amendment Bill. See, recently, the Election Laws Amendment Bill 2021 was passed in the Lok Sabha. The bill seeks to link electoral roll data and voter ID cards with the Aadhaar ecosystem. What is the significance? If the bill seeks to link electoral roll data and voter ID cards with the Aadhaar ecosystem. So the opposition has raised several objections to the bill as it concerning the privacy and all. So important features of the bill you should know. See first is deduplication of electoral roll. It provides for amendment of section 23 of the RPA enabling the linking of electoral roll data with Aadhaar ecosystem. First of all it is that. So it aims to curb multiple enrollment of the same person. It helps in stopping bogus sorting. What is meant by bogus sorting? Kalla voter. Okay, bogus voting and fraudulent votes and the linking is in consonance with 105th report of the department related parliamentary standing committee and all. It will avoid multiple qualifying dates and all. All these points you have to go through, very important. And see, in order to bring gender neutrality, the language for registration of wives of service voter will now be replaced by spouse. Statement based questions can be expected. In order to bring gender neutrality, the language for registration of wives of service voter will now be replaced by spouse. Very important, very important questions can be expected. Is it clear? Very important. Okay, see, whatever I am saying is only important for the exam. Other part you can just read it later. Okay, we have only limited time, that is why. 
Moving on further, we have sedition law. See, India is the country, only country which is having sedition law. See, it is inspired from the UK government, but now even in UK it has been repealed, but India have repealed the sedition law. So, sedition law is dealt under which article? Not article, under section 124A, section 124A of the IPC. So, it has a futility in combating anti-national, successionist and terrorist elements. It protects the elected government from attempts to overthrow the government with violence and illegal means. And the existence of the government is an essential condition of the stability of the state. It is in alignment with contempt of court. See, what is the important is sedition law is often misused. Okay. The word sedition is not well defined in the IPC. So, that it is often misused and the government uses it as a political power in order to suppress the opposition and those who are raising voice against the government. So, sedition law is really important. Are you able to follow me? Fine, right? Moving on further, we have UAP, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Very important, again very important. See, it is passed in the year 1967. Important. Year is important. It passed in the year 1967. The law aims at effective prevention of unlawful activities associated in India. Unlawful activities associated in India. The act assigns absolute power to the central government. Who is given the absolute power? The central government is given the absolute power and the center deems an activity as unlawful when it may by the way an official gazette declare it so. So it has death penalty and life imprisonment has highest punishments. See key points what you should note here is in under UAPA both Indian and foreign nationals can be charged. It is not only for Indians it is also for who? Other foreigners okay or foreign nationals can be also charged. See, it will be applicable to the offenders in the same manner even if crime is committed on foreign land outside India. So, geographical location if you consider it is also outside India, this UAP can be implemented. And thirdly, the investigative agency can file a charge sheet in maximum 180 days after the arrest and the duration can be extended further after intimating the court. So, preventive detention is possible. Okay, preventive detention is possible. So, UAPA is very important, 1967, both Indian and foreign nationals can be charged and the geographical extent is not only India, it can be outside India also, UAPA can be implemented, very important. And see, Delimitation Commission, again very important, say delimitation was conducted in 1953, 62, 72 and 2002 and now it is praised till 2026, okay, our 545 seats in Lok Sabha is praised till 2026 and what is the importance is 2026 we will be having new census and new delimitation exercise will be conducted. That is why the Modi government is uh, like uh, constructing the central vista and all in order to accommodate more legislatures. So that is important. Moving on to delimitation commission. See now our delimitation commission activity is uh, like uh, doing, it, it is doing an activity in Jammu and Kashmir. See Jammu and Kashmir is bifurcated into two. We have Kashmir and Leda. So, Kashmir has a legislative assembly. So, delimitation exercise is carried out there. So, in that context, delimitation commission is in use. So, it is very, very important. So, delimitation literally means what? The act or process of fixing limits or boundaries of territorial constituencies in a country to represent changes in population. So, it is applicable to Lok Sabha delimitation. And delimitation is appointed by whom? By the President of India and works in collaboration with Election Commission of India. Again, important appointed by president and works in collaboration with election commission of India. And another important aspect is composition. It comprises of retired Supreme Court judge, chief election commissioner, respective state election commissioners. Again, very important. Moving on further, the functions. What is the functions? To identify seats reserved for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. In case of difference of opinion among members of the commission, the opinion of the majority prevails. And very, very important aspect, delimitation commission is not subjected to judicial review. It cannot be challenged in court. I think it is the only one provision which doesn't have judicial review or which cannot be challenged in court. Okay, very, very important. You should know about it. It cannot be challenged in court. So, that is what it is meaning. It doesn't have judicial review. Very, very important. Moving on further, we have PESA. See, what is PESA? Panchayati Raj extends to, to schedule areas. See, schedule areas comes under which all uh, like schedule, schedule 5 and schedule 6. Schedule 5, we have other scheduled areas and schedule 6 consists of 4 states. Which all are the 4 states? 
schedule 6 see there is a code as a meghalaya tripura mizoram so what is this asymmetry okay don't forget asymmetry as a meghalaya tripura mizoram see if you study am tm and all you may get confused with man manipur and all okay manipur meghalaya and all so study this code as a meghalaya tripura mizoram schedule 6 areas and again coming to schedule 5 areas in schedule 5 areas we haven't implemented the panchayati raj institutions directly we have implemented it through pesa see in 1996 so this year marks the 25th year of pesa so that is why it is in use and you may please note that article 243m okay extends the fifth schedule areas from part 9 provision of panchayati raj of the constitution but the parliament is empowered to extend its provision to the scheduled and tribal areas by law so that law is what law pesa pesa of 1996 okay pesa act of 1996 so it came under the recommendation of dilip singh bhuria committee okay very important again one committee dilip singh bhuria committee and it was enacted in 1996 for the tribal empowerment and bring them into the mainstream and it is called as the constitution within the constitution very important it is called as the constitution within the constitution which is known as mini constitution yes very good 42nd constitution amendment act is known as the mini constitution okay and it extends to fifth scheduled areas of 10 states under clause 1 of the article 244 with certain modifications and exception see 73rd and 74th constitution amendment acts you may be knowing okay that you should study very well it comes under your static part and this year as it marks the 25th anniversary of pesa you should study pesa also really important the committee dilip singh committee and again which all states comes under pesa is important see 10 states andhra pradesh chatisgarh gujarat himachal pradesh jharkhand madhya pradesh maharashtra orissa rajasthan and telangana comes under pesa you have to by heart it no other way or else try to follow some code or something some abbreviation or code or something so that you may not forget it okay next is digital rights see who came up with digital rights european commission it is not european union european commission in a global first proposed a set of digital rights and principles recently it is an extension of berlin declaration on digital society so what is berlin declaration is associated with digital society and value based digital government of eu council something related to digital digitization it is involved in and about digital rights it is closely linked to freedom of expression and privacy are those that allow people to access use create and publish digital data as well as access and use computers other electronic devices and communication networks and digital rights are merely an extension to rights set out in universal declaration of human rights by the un as applied to the online world See what is United Nations Declaration of Human Rights? In which year it came in? Nineteen nineteen forty-eight. Universal Declaration of Human Rights came in nineteen forty-eight. When is Human Rights Day? See, as I mentioned earlier, important days can sometimes be asked in UPSC for UPSC ND and CD CDS examination. This day kind of stuff is asked by UPSC. So now onwards, maybe. i am not telling 100 percentage maybe important days can be asked statement by questions can be asked so december 10th is human rights day december 10th okay very important and see that it is a resolution it is not a treaty universal declaration of human rights is not a treaty so it is not binding on the parties very important it is a resolution india was in the forefront for formulating this resolution that is also important but it is a resolution not a treaty statement by questions can be expected very important fine moving on further okay moving on further we have mission karma yogi see who is karma yogi one who is involved in work karma see the government of india approved a new capacity building program called mission karma yogi it is a national program for civil service capacity building see it is a national program for civil service capacity building and it will be delivered through a digital platform called as igot karma yogi igot stands for integrated government online training integrated government online tra 
training okay igot so igot initiative is aimed towards need based capacity building of state and central government offices and to facilitate outreach of training facilities so mission karma yogis is associated with civil service capacity building important really important okay moving on further we have arbitration and conciliation amendment bill i have already mentioned what is arbitration and what is conciliation so it is a news because the lok sabha has passed the arbitration and conciliation bill 2021 to check the misuse of fly by night operators who take advantage of the law to get favorable awards by fraud the act deals with domestic and international arbitration very important it deals with domestic as well as international arbitration it deals in deals in the eighth schedule of the act that contain the necessary qualification of accreditation of arbitrators and it also have in section 36 of the act so it deals with domestic and international arbitration that is the important point you should focus okay and next is right to reputation right to reputation see right to reputation comes under which article like which right is it a fundamental right again it comes under article 21 similar to right to be forgotten it comes under article 21 so as per supreme court the right to reputation is an integral part of article 21 of the constitution and it ensures the social interest is served by holding a reputation as a shared value of public at large and in manega gandhi case you may be knowing ak gobalan then manega gandhi case procedure established by law and due process of law was enacted during that case and you should know that the sc gave a new dimension to article 21 see procedure established by law is derived from which which constitution procedure established by law japan very good japan see important provisions drawn from various constitution is really important fundamental rights from where dpsp from where irish constitution see you should know all these okay liberty from where equality from where then fundamental duties is from where you should know about that and procedure established by law is inspired from japanese constitution very important see in between i am saying the static part in order to make you aware of the static aspect as well static part as well that is why i am hinting some topics you may go home and read those topics in detail okay see polity is a very very important topic it is highly scoring also if you have interest in the subject if you have the conceptual clarity if you can uh, score very well if 20 questions are asked you can almost score 18 to 19 questions for sure it is a very interesting subject okay so right to reputation see current affairs won't be that much interesting but the static part is really interesting polity okay how is polity for you difficult okay right okay subject and secondly next is e ilp platform okay what is ilp inner line permit okay inner line permit so the chief minister of manipur virtually launched the e ilp platform for effective regulation of the inner line permit system in the state it is a document that indian citizen from other states are required to process in order to enter states like see code is ma nian see northeastern states okay northeastern states manipur mizoram arunachal pradesh nagaland clear four states has ilp now manipur mizoram arunachal pradesh nag nagaland very important okay this is the code see i am saying the codes because northeastern states often get confused okay you may get confused by the state names all these are meghalaya manipur mmm and all you may get confused that's why and it is issued by who concerned state government it is issued by the concerned state government very important very important so e ilp platform recently manipur so ilp which all state manipur mizoram arunachal pradesh nagaland okay that's all see next is environment topics do you have any doubts clear right we have discussed 20 topics 20 topics now moving on with environment see i'll tell you a brief introduction part environment and ecology it is okay ecology and environment you should know the basics of ecology what is ecosystem what is ecological niche what is ecosphere what is hydrosphere all the basics you should know primary succession secondary succession all these are really important you should know the basics of ecology and uh, this pyramid and all is really important see your respective faculty for environment will brief it to you and environment aspect all the environment legislation all the environmental organizations are really important 
in current affairs point of view, it is really important. And international conventions related to environment and all are important. So static part, I haven't included much in detail, but the thing is the current affairs aspect of it is included here. So those topics which were in news, the static part I haven't included because you will study in your static portions, right? So if I include that also, it may take a lot of time. So I have included the current affair aspect and important uh, kind of uh, conventions, important kind of uh, legislations, etc. I have included in current affairs. So moving on, we have the first topic. Emission gap report. See, emission gap, see, important reports, they can sometimes ask you the key findings of the report. Okay, did you get me? They can ask you about the key findings. So, whenever you study a report, you should also focus on the key, key what, key important points or key aspects of the report you should focus. So, who is releasing emission gap report? It is UNEP, United Nations Environment Program. You may be familiar with that. The 12th edition of UNEP emission gap report is now being released. So, it informs that the new national climate pledges combined with other mitigation measures put the world on track for a global temperature rise of 2.7 degrees Celsius by the end of the country. Important. Okay. It informs us that the global temperature rise of 2.7 degrees Celsius by the end of this century. Okay. And regarding the key findings, see around 79 percentage of countries have adopted at least one national level adaptation planning instrument. Important. Adaptation costs and financing needs in developing countries are 5 to 10 times greater than current financial flows. Important. Adaptation finance gap is larger than indicated in 2020 and widening. So, opportunities provided by COVID-19 recovery stimulus packages for green and resilient recoveries are not currently being realized. See, all these findings are there in emission gap report. You may just go through the findings or important points, very important. So, who is releasing this report? UNEP. So, now we will discuss about UNEP. What is the full form of UNEP? United Nations Environment Program. So, it is a leading global environmental authority established in June 5, 1972. This June 5 is celebrated as World Environmental Day. And it sets the global environmental agenda, promotes sustainable development within the United Nations. And headquarters is where? Nairobi, Kenya. Very important. Nairobi, Kenya. It is not in Europe. I think it is the only one organization which is not having the headquarters in Europe. Okay. I am not sure. Do check. So, it is in Nairobi, Kenya. And major reports, emission gap report, adaptation gap report, global environment outlook, frontiers, invest to healthy planet, etc. And major campaigns, beat pollution, UN 75, World Environment Day, wild for life. Very important UNEP. See, important conventions are also important. Important conventions under UNEP. See, Stockholm Convention. It speaks about persistent organic pollutants. Very good. Basel Convention, Hazardous Waste, okay, see Stockholm Convention, Basel Convention, CMS Convention, Convention on Migratory Species, otherwise known as Bone Convention, then Rotterdam Convention, all these conventions are really important. You should study Vienna Convention. Vienna Convention is about ozone, very, very important, okay. So, UNEP, conventions, you may please note it down because I haven't included in the material, okay. I will share the material anyway. Other points that I am talking in between is important. So, that particular areas you may please note it down. Other important aspects are there in the material. I will share the material with you. Don't worry. And moving on further, again a report, IPCC 6th Assessment Report. So, recently United Nations Climate Science Body, IPCC, IPCC. See, IPCC is formed by, IPCC is formed under, like is formed by two bodies. WMO and UNEP. Okay. World Meteorological Organization and UNEP. Very important. Okay. And three reports has come up. The second part of the report was published in March was about climate change impacts, risk and vulnerability and adaptation option. First report was on the physical science of climate change. It was published in 2021 and it warned that 1.5 degrees Celsius warming was likely to be achieved before 2040 itself. Important. Important. Okay. And what is Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC? It is an international body for assessing the science related to climate change. It was set up in the year 1988. Okay, it was set up in the year 1988. 
by World Meteorological Organization and UNEP. And IPCC assessment provides a scientific basis for government at all levels. Okay. And underlie negotiations in the UN Climate Conference, UNFCC, etc. And what is the assessment report of IPCC? The assessment report, first of which had come out in 1990. Important. The first assessment report came out in 1990 under the most comprehensive evaluation of the state of the Earth's climate. Very few, every few years, about seven years, the IPCC produces assessment reports. Important. See, it is not a hard and fast rule that every seven years it comes with a report. Uh, every few years, about seven years. It is not a hard and fast rule. Okay. And the assessment reports is like did by three working groups. One is working group one. It deals with scientific basis for climate change. Working group two looks at the likely impacts, vulnerabilities and adaptation issues. Working group 3 deals with action that can be taken to combat climate change. Three working groups are there. Is it clear? See, are you feeling comfortable? Is it okay? Environment topics. Polity is clear, right? Polity is clear. So, now we are dealing with environment. Moving on further, GHG bulletin. See, greenhouse gas bulletin. Very important. See, according to World Meteorological Organization, greenhouse gas bulletin. So, who is releasing? World Meteorological Organization. The amount of greenhouses in the atmosphere reached a new record last year with an annual increase of more than 2011-2020. See what are greenhouse gases you may be knowing. Which are the gases? Nitrous oxide, water vapor. Very important. Okay. And this is see greenhouse gas bulletin. It is about nearly 5.6 percentage decline in CO2 emissions by 2020 due to epidemic related restriction. And earlier, WMO released a report entitled United in Science in 2021. And WMO is a United Nations Special Center for Meteorology. So, Greenhouse Gas Bulletin is released by who? World Meteorological Organization. Who all came up with IPCC? WMO plus UNEP in the year 1988. And one important aspect you should focus here is IPCC does not conduct original research. Very important is there in your environment, Shanga. IAS textbook, it does not do original research, it does not conduct original research, very very important. And moving on further, have you heard about INDC, India Nationally Determined Contributions, it came up in COP21 at Paris, Paris deal, okay, Paris deal and three important aspects are there with India's INDC, India's NDC or INDC, very very important, it can be asked in mains, it can be quoted in your mains answer as a fodder. And another important aspect is it just can be asked in prelims as statement wise question also. Very important by heart it to achieve 40 percentage of cumulative electric power installed capacity from non fossil fuel by 2030. Reducing emission intensity of its GDP by 33-35 from 2005 levels by 2030. And to create an additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of CO2 equivalent through additional forest and tree cover. Very important three important aspects of India's NDC. You should buy heart it, no other go. See, conceptualize the topics and try to buy heart. 30, 40 percentage, 33 to 35 GDP from 2005 levels and to create a carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of CO2. Equivalent through additional forest and tree cover. Very, very important. Okay. Next is COP26. See, recently COP26 was held at Glasgow. Last year means also few questions were asked directly from Glasgow summit. Okay. So, you can expect questions in prelims also from Glasgow Summit, which was held in Glasgow, COP26. See, COP21, COP is associated with the UNFCC, Conference of Parties, you may be knowing. The static portions, you have to study very well. And COP1 was held in, see, it came under UNFCC. UNFCC was adopted in 1992. It was ratified in the year 1994, UNFCC. And first summit was held in 1995 in which country, like in which place? Berlin, Berlin, okay, COP1 was held in Berlin. See, any COPs held in India? How many number of COPs were held in India? See, only one, which was COP8. COP8, okay, COP8 was held in India, very important COP8 was held in India, COP21 again important, Paris, recently COP26, see you may study all the COPs, okay, last 5 to 6 COPs really important, 20 onwards you should study by heart, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, very important and see 
the government of india has articulated and put across concerns of developing countries at the 26th session of the conference of parties and india has come with a uh, like with a like climate action program called as panjamrit okay very important india has come up with panjamrit what is panjamrit five nectar elements see panjamritam five nectar elements panjamritam okay panjamrit so india has presented the following five nectar elements of india's climate action so in glasgow summit india has come up with panjamrit see what all comes under panjamrit to reach 500 gigawatts of non fossil energy capacity by 2030 50 percentage of its energy requirements from renewable energy by 2030 reduction of total projected carbon emissions by 1 billion tons from now to 2030 reduction of the carbon intensity of the economy by 45 percentage by 2030 over 25 levels achieving the target target of net zero emissions by 2070 again no other go try to memorize it very very important 500 gigawatts 50 percentage then 1 billion tons from now to 2030 45 percentage by 2030 reduction of carbon intensity achieving the target of net zero emission by 2070 see years are all very important see now upsc is playing with factual content they are mismatching the years and dates so questions can be expected okay very very important really important and moving on further we have national clean air program see who launched national clean air program India it is launched by India Ministry of National it is so definitely India Ministry of Environment Forest and Climate Change see in the year 2019 so it is the first ever effort in the country to frame a national framework for air quality management with a time bound reduction target okay see it targets pm 10 particulate matter pm 10 particulate matter 10 and particulate matter 2.5 so it seeks to cut the concentration of coal and fine particles coal pm 10 fine pm 2.5 by at least 20 percentage in the next 5 years with 2017 as the base year for comparison and the plan includes one or two non attainment cities also that is not important and non attainment cities these are those that have fallen short of the national air um, air quality standards naqs for over 5 years so they are called as non attainment cities not so important so national clean air program is targeting what coarse particles and fine particles pm particulate matter 10 and particulate matter 2.5 very very important national clean air program it was formulated by the ministry of environment forest and climate change important and say dublin principle okay see whenever you hear the name dublin principle what should comes to your mind is water conservation or water related something okay so it highlights the importance of water as a resource for environmental protection So Dublin is a place in Ireland. The output it was in 1992. International Conference of Water and Environment was held in Dublin. The output from this conference was a declaration called as Dublin Declaration or Dublin Principles. The inclusion of the Dublin Principles in the conference debate helped to highlight the importance of water as a resource for environmental protection and human development. And this remained the standard or consideration of the issues surrounding water use and production. See whenever. or wherever there is an issue regarding water pollution or water conservation they will definitely refer to what dublin principles very important dublin principles or dublin statements or dublin declaration all these comes under water importance of water water conservation etc very important okay moving on further we have ocean cleanup ocean cleanup See Ocean Cleanup is a Netherland based NPO non-profit organization aims at eliminating the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. I show you Great Pacific Garbage Patch is in Pacific Ocean. I show the picture to you. So it is also known as Pacific Trash Vortex. It is a collection of marine debris garbage in the North Pacific Ocean. Distinct collections of debris bounded by massive North Pacific subtropical gyre. See what is gyre? It is a large system of swirling ocean currents. so it is composed of western garbage patch located near japan and all i'll show the picture see ocean cleanup is an initiative of netherland based npo which country netherlands ocean cleanup is an initiative by which country netherland based npo very important see the figure is the figure clear to your picture see this is pacific ocean here we have usa north america west garbage patch see if you 
uh, youtube it or google it you will see clear pictures okay we have garbage patches there in order to clean those garbage patches netherland based ngo npo has come up with ocean cleaner very important where is this garbage patch and all can be asked in your prelims examination really important moving on further we have cats we have cats okay see why it is a news on the occasion of global tiger day when is global tiger day global tiger day july 29 i guess so july 29 important ministry of environment forest and climate change announced conservation assured tiger standards cat stands for conservation assured tiger standards and it is accredited for 14 of india's 51 tiger reserves see all the tiger reserves you have to study with state and all you have to study and cats is implemented in 14 of india's 51 tiger reserves i have provided the names see orang manas kasiranga sundarbans valmigi dutwa panna kanha satpura pench parambikulam and theme for this year international tiger day is their survival is in our hands very important see july 29 i hope so it is global tiger day and what is the theme of this year their survival is in our hands see as i mentioned earlier sometimes upsc can miss see we can't uh, like predict upsc it is often referred as the unpredictable service commission you may be knowing so this kind of questions sports related questions can be expected okay and about cats cats are globally accepted conservation tool that set best practices and standard to manage tigers and assessment of benchmark progress tigers are the first species selected for the initiative it was launched in 2013 implemented across 125 sites global tiger forum and worldwide fund india are implementing partners of national tiger conservation authority for cats see who is heading national tiger conservation authority ntca who is heading who is the chairman chairperson minister for environment very good minister for environment see who is heading national board for wildlife i didn't hear prime minister very important so national board for wildlife is headed by pm okay and national tiger conservation authority is headed by who minister for environment and forest climate change very important nbwl is headed by pm pm okay important so and another important point is this cat is being adopted for use beyond tigers including potential jaguars lions freshwater dolphins so is it only for tigers no very important it is not only for tigers it is for potential jaguars lions and freshwater dolphins very very important okay is it clear all these topics environment topics